Well, hello everybody. Um, these videos are coming thick and fast now, but I need to do these for the Isle of Man, although this video applies to everybody. It really does. It's to do with wind turbines, the length of life, and the sort of operating costs. Now, in the Isle of Man, they've made claims, as they have elsewhere, of 20, 25, up to 35 years life for the wind farms. That is nonsense. Now, work's been done on this, and it's been done by a professor from Edinburgh, Professor Hughes from Edinburgh, Gordon Hughes. And his work doesn't rely on what people tell him. It, he goes through the actual accounts of the wind companies. He goes through to get the actual raw data and then compiles a report based on that. The link to that report is in the description below. But I'm just going to summarise some of the things from that report because they're really important for you to understand in the Isle of Man, in particular because you'll have a small remote installation. So here we go. Let's look at just how long you can expect turbines to last and what performance you get out of them. And the funny thing here is, the more modern the turbine, the bigger it is, the faster it declines. Now this is uh, two paragraphs from um, Professor Hughes' report. The normalised load factor, don't forget the load factor is how much you get out. Uh, and, and he has um, taken this right across and normalised just means all the other variables are taken out. We know it's just a load factor we're looking at. And it declined from a peak of about 24%, that's the average at the time, um, and that's quite recent, uh, age one, that's when it's brand new, to 15% at age 10. So it lost 11% at age 15. Well, that's a drop of 46% in the amount of energy getting out over 15 years. This is a remarkably fast decline. I'll continue to read. The decline in the normalised load factor for Danish onshore wind farms is slower, but still significant, with a fall from a peak of 22% to 18% at age 15. On the other hand, for offshore wind farms to Denmark, the normalised load factor falls from 39%, 39% because, of course, it's offshore, much higher yields, at age 0 to 15% at age 10. That's a, dro a drop of 24, 24 points, which actually means it's a 61% of your energy gone in 10 years, more than doubling the cost of your energy. The reason for the observed declines in normalised load factors cannot be fully assessed using the data available, but outages due to mechanical breakdowns appear to be the contributory factor. Now turning to um, UK onshore, which is what we're talking about basically with you here, analysis of site-specific performance reveals the average normalised load factors of a new UK onshore wind farm at age one that's the peak year of operation, declined significantly from 2000 to 2011. So in other words, as we progressed, we were actually having faster rates of decline. In other words, this idea that things are getting better and better, only on year one they are, the rate of decline is increasing. In addition, larger wind farms are systematically worse performance than smaller wind farms. Adjusted for age and wind availability, the overall performance of wind farms in the UK has deteriorated markedly since the beginning of the century. So we've declined since 2000, you know, as, as regards the overall performance, not what you're being told. And this is all based on real data, not what people tell us, going through to the accounts of the wind farm companies, extracting the data, a lot of work by Professor Hughes. Now, of course, you can go to the full report and read it, but this is one interesting graph from it. And the report did deal with Denmark and, and the UK, they were cross-referenced. OK, so look at that black line. We start off at about 25% for load factors, and look at as we, as we age how that load factor drops. So basically, by about year 15, you really have to replace the wind farm because you've, you've lost it all. Now what's happened in the UK is these have declined, but to keep it going in some form, Milliband is having to pay a lot, but that's only postponing it a short time. And the point here is, and it's really important, and there's more graphs, but the bigger the turbines, the faster the decline. And we're, you're getting big turbines in the Alaman, it's pretty well everyone, is everywhere those are subject to a faster rate of decline. The problem in the Isle of Man, of course, is your maintenance costs growing all the time because you're remote 
are going to give all sorts of interruptions to your power supply and really big operating costs. So what you're being told is just 1% or 2% a year and all this, or 3 million a year, forget it. You're losing performance all the time. Siemens Energy, of, of late, produced a 12 megawatt um, turbine. That was the biggest so far. The result was it failed everywhere. It cost them 4.5 billion euros. An incredible thing. Their shares dropped and they had to be rescued by the German government. All I am trying to do is warn the Isle of Man residents, but this video applies everywhere. It's warning about the operating costs and the length of life of these wind farms. So that's the end of this video, but I'd just like to trailer the next video. Um, there's a thing called infrasound, and what it is, it, it, is it's a frequency of sound below what humans can hear, really below, and below what the normal um, detectors for noise can detect. Um, whales know all about it, and infrasound can actually um, really be such a nuisance around wind farms, certainly within a mile or so of the wind farm, that they can actually affect people so much they have to get out of the houses. In fact, we have cases which I'll be going into where the house value drops to nothing uh, and they have to get out. The reason is to do with motion sickness. The sound enters your body and enters the cavities in your stomach and your chest and in your ears in the most. And you get motion sickness all the time. It's like being seasick all the time. When you move out to a hotel, the seasickness stops. When you move out, it comes back. Uh, and I'll be going into that and showing you the work on that. But I, I would recommend, uh, and that will be saying that you really ought to be, I would say, um, the wind farm should be a mile from any residence. Um, so you put a radius around, around the wind farm. Uh, I, any, anyone within a mile of that, uh, I would be concerned. So the next video is about that. And by the way, the consultants have just dismissed infrasound. You know, I've heard nothing about it sort of thing. So I'll be going into that in some detail. It's a much bigger video than this five minute one. Um, I would advise you down the road you may need to employ someone like Professor Gordon Hughes from Edinburgh. He's a consultant. He does do consultants. I know he's very busy and I know he's full at the moment. But And I have no connection other than having some email communication with him about load factors. That's all I've had. Um, he, by the way, you know, would tell you the load factors are absolute nonsense that are being claimed. So um, please... Um, have a think about that. So I'm warning you, it's a trailer for the next video. It's going to be a very interesting one. I'm doing a lot of research on it. Um, but it's something that could affect a huge number of people. And in fact, um, don't forget, in the UK, has basically banned onshore wind farms until now with Ed Miller banding, open them up again. And um, so we effectively had a total ban on onshore wind farms. We didn't have to go into this. But I'll be quoting Hansard from the UK Parliament and all sorts of things, showing you the evidence uh, about how this wind farm can damage huge number of houses and homes, you know, homes and people in the Isle of Man. And you'll see house prices dropping and everything besides that, because the scare story goes around, you won't be able to sell your house. So that's the next subject to cheer you up. <laughs> And all I'm doing is trying to help, you know, that's all I'm doing is trying to give you fair warning because no one else is. And for any speciality study, because the green industry, the oh, well, sorry, the energy industry is in green. This whole renewable industry is nonsense. It's anti the environment, if anything. Um, I would advise that you do not continue with the same people who have a very invested interest in getting more and more consultancy um, when you come to things like um, bird surveys or bat surveys or or infrasounds and so on I, I, you're going to need to get individual people who can do a report they're paid for the report but they've got no vested interest in carrying on this saga to build and all the way through uh, and because that would be the best way to do it that's just my advice it's a personal opinion that's all it is uh, and um, there we are please comment and please share this video with everyone i would like every one of the other man to be watching these videos uh, I'm really pushing them out at the moment because I'm desperate to stop the madness going on. I'm trying to do it also while you're having these consultations going on, which aren't consultations, they're, they're box ticking exercises because they can't tell you the cost or anything. Yeah, and so there we are. Bye. <laughs>